Oops, I forgot to thread my sewing machine. <laughs> If I didn't already know and you asked me to guess which of my videos from last year would have been among the most popular, I definitely would not have guessed yarn doll hair. And yet that is exactly what happened. Not only was it one of my most popular videos, it was my most popular blog post and it went kind of crazy on Pinterest. So this video is kind of a follow up to that one. But today I have a brand new pattern to reveal to you. I'm very excited about it. It's been in the works for a while and it is the pattern for the mermaid doll. Isn't she cute? Her name is Persephone Mermaid. You can make her with this kind of top or more of a bikini top or more like a coconut bra top. <laughs> so today though, this video is not how to make the whole doll. It is how to make a yarn doll hairstyle that is more versatile than just like say this one. That her hair can really only be a ponytail or bun and her hair can kind of only be pigtails. So Yarn doll hair is actually very, very easy. And I had said in that original video that if you wanted me to make more hairstyles, another video, then please chime in and a lot of people have. So this pattern was developed kind of with that in mind. I wanted to show you how to make yarn doll hair that can be styled in a lot of different ways or just be left down. That's what this video today is going to teach you how to do. Even if you're not into doll making right now, I bet you will be by the end of this because rag dolls are just so much fun. And these are definitely some of my most favorite patterns. They're very close to my heart, my rag doll collection. I will put the link to not only the mermaid doll, but my whole collection of dolls and doll clothes patterns in the description below so that you can go over and grab some. They're so cute. These would make the best Christmas gifts, especially because the Little Mermaid movie just came out. So you could make one that looked like Ariel. Right after I made the third one, I was at Hobby Lobby and I saw a remnant of like fish tail. It looked like mermaid fin fabric but it was too late. So you could try to look for one of those too. Oh, I was gonna actually tell you what exactly a pattern looks like when you buy it from my shop. It comes, this one comes with 16 printable pages with all the instructions, the pattern pieces, and step-by-step -step instructions with photos. There's a ton of photos to help you. And then this collection of ragdoll sewing tutorials here on YouTube helps you even more. So I have those in a playlist so that if you get stuck on any step on any of the patterns, you can look up how to do it with more visual help. But I think, I think that's all I have to say for the intro. Let's get started. Okay, so I have my hairless mermaid ready for her hairdo. And I have kept eight sheets of, this is regular printer paper, by folding them each in half to mark the center. So the first thing we need to do is make our wefts of hair. A piece of hair is called a weft. It's gonna have a center seam down it. Today I have this wool yarn. I just used wool yarn for this purpose for the first time recently. It was on this doll because I got this at like a market I was at. It was a Celtic fair actually. And she had a booth. I will link to her because I think she still sells on Facebook and in person. So this is the first time though that I've used wool yarn and it is so heavenly to play with. Like it just looks so good. This was an alpaca hand dyed yarn. And so then I, on my next one, I used a cotton yarn just from Hobby Lobby and it looks cool because it was multicolored, but the cotton is actually very heavy and it almost weighs her head down. So I don't recommend cotton yarn. On all my other dolls so far though, I've just used worsted weight. It's plenty lightweight and it works just fine. And also it's really inexpensive. But for this mermaid, I'm again going to use wool yarn. I got this at a local shop in a town nearby mine. So I'll link to her shop also. But it just, oh man, it feels so good. The added benefit of this is that when you're making the wefts, see how it's not already wound into a skein of yarn, that actually saves me a lot of time. Because if you do not have yarn like this and yours is wound into a skein already, what you need to do is wrap your yarn around a piece of cardboard. Here's mine, it's eight inches. You need thick cardboard so it doesn't bend as you're wrapping. Okay, mine is seven. Seven to eight inches wide piece of cardboard and you need to wrap, wrap, wrap. You need to wrap it until it's about five inches wide and no gaps. But because mine is not wound into a skein, lucky me, I'm just going to cut this into four equal pieces. And they should end up being about 16 inches each. Let's see. Yeah, so it looks like I'll get more like 12 inches each out of this one, which is totally fine. So I'm just going to cut this either end. The yarn hair leaves a lot of room for trimming at the end, so it's okay if it's just a different length than my other ones. You can see this is very scientific for me. <laughs> not like, not a crazy measurer. Okay, 
And then I will just cut each one of these in half. This is just a thing that was holding it together, I think. It's almost the exact size. So it's almost 24 inches, so I'm gonna get 12 inches because I need to make four wefts of hair. So if you're winding, you need to repeat this process four times, but you can make one at a time. Okay, but here's my four separate pieces. Whoops. So her hair is gonna be a little bit shorter. Out of this wool yarn, I think I was able to make them each 16. That is totally okay. All right, so I'm going to pick one of them to start with. And if you had wrapped your yarn on cardboard, I'll show you a picture of this too. You just um, put it here, because here's your looped yarn around this way. You're gonna snip it open on one side, and then you will just unfold it onto your piece of paper so that it is centered. In my case, I'm just going to center my yarn on my paper. And since mine came all bunched up like this, I'm going to spread it out. If you wrapped yours on cardboard, you won't have to do that. Should be pretty spread out, but you will want to like pat it down and make sure there's no gaps or like really extra full parts. So I'm just sort of spreading my yarn out so that it covers my paper up to one inch from each edge. Again, it's not rocket science. Exact measurements really aren't that important here. I think for, I don't think, I know, for Ruby, I simply wound it around this ruler. She needs less hair because her hair is shorter. So use whatever is available to you. Make it as long as you want. So it looks pretty even, it's pretty centered. It's okay that I have some raggedy edges here because those are gonna get trimmed off at the end. Then I'm going to take another sheet of paper, place it on top of the first. I'm going to place some pins, hold it in there just through the paper. And we're going to go sew through this paper on the line that we marked the center with. So you need matching thread, thread that matches your yarn, and you need to lower your stitch length to one and a half because the smaller your stitches, the better it's gonna hold your yarn together. So I'll show you, I'm gonna take this. Oh, bless me, goodness. I'm gonna take this over to the sewing machine and I'm gonna show you how exactly I do that. Oops. I forgot to thread my sewing machine. <laughs> okay, take two. Go right under there, start sewing. I do backstitch once I get onto the yarn. Okay, so now it looks like this. I'm going to trim off my threads. And then you'll be able to just tear the paper away. That's another reason for that small stitch length so that paper doesn't get caught in your yarn. I mean, paper doesn't get caught in the seam. Okay, so here's your first weft of hair. It's secure and it's ready to go. So now we need to make three more. You might only need three total, but on this doll, I needed three and on this doll, Where'd she go? I needed four. So it just kind of depends on how big you make them. So you can wait to make the fourth if you want, but I'm just gonna go ahead and make four. Okay, I've made all four of my hair wefts. Here they are in a big pile. This yarn is so pretty. You can see the variance in the dye. So first we need to prep her head by drawing some lines on it. I usually use a pencil for this. Hopefully you'll be able to see it. This hair is going to be an all over hairdo like this, meant to be worn down. You'll be able to put it like in a ponytail probably, but I know that people often want yarn hair that can be styled like all kinds of ways. And that's, that's this hairstyle to a degree. But if you'll notice that when you buy dolls from the store, their hair is really only made to be styled in one way, maybe a couple ways. Because if you have it in like pigtails, then she'll have bald spots if you take the pigtails out. And if you, style hers, if you try to put hers in pigtails, you see you'll have bald spots all over it. So so this hairstyle is pretty versatile. You'll be able to do a ponytail, of course. You'll be able to put a little braid in it. Um, you can do some, look how low pigtails work, like this. So if you do want versatility, this is the hairstyle that you want to go with, rather than like the bun that's, her hair is just sewn on one weft in a circle and then bunned up here. So this one will be the most versatile, which I know little ones love. So I'm going to make a line and this will be indicated on the pattern piece. I think I'm going about 5 8 inch down from the seam. And I'm going to sort of grade that line into the side of her face like so. So the first weft of hair, this will be the initial circle that we stitched the hair onto. 
So down here I have about half an inch between the nape of her neck and the line. And then I'm going to have it meet again over here. So I have that very first line. And then in the back of the head, we're going to make four more lines. One line is going to be this seam here. And then let's see, let me make a center line like this. For the ballerina bun, you only sew on sew hair onto this initial line. So she only requires one or two wefts of hair. For the pigtails, her hair, it goes around that initial line, but then it goes straight up the back to meet at the top. And then that's all, and then you divide them into pigtails. But for this doll, she gets several horizontal wefts sewn on. So I divided it in half. Now I'm going to make like a curved line here. And these lines will all meet at the front line that I drew. Then I'm going to make one more line here. And then there's gonna be one here where this seam is. I th actually think for this doll I made five lines. Let's see, I made the pink, then I made the blue, and then the purple is three, pink is four, nope, and blue is five. Okay, so the seam line makes five lines total, minus the circle one. Okay, so basically you just want some horizontal lines, and then if I feel later like I need to add some hair in here, I will, but let's see how this covers. Okay, so I'm gonna take my thread that matches my hair, and I need a needle. I actually like to use kind of a long needle for this. That's better. Okay, I'm going to cut a length of thread. Not too long, so you don't want it to get all tangled up in your pieces of yarn. Going to thread my needle, maybe. My phone's going off because my grocery order is coming. Okay, knot the ends together. Okay, I'm going to start with a weft in the back of the head. So using this sewing machine sewn seam, I'm going to stitch on top of that seam and I'm going to match that seam up with the lines I drew on her head. So the first one is gonna go around her head. It might not be long enough, it might be, or might not, it doesn't matter. I like to just jab pins in, maybe like a few inches at a time, making sure that I follow the line. And then once I get to that point, I'll place some more pins in and keep directing the hair. So to do this, you're going to use a back stitch for extra security. So I'm gonna go in and then you go back and come out maybe a centimeter, not a centimeter, a couple millimeters later. So it's nice and secure. Go back and then come back out so that every single strand of yarn is getting at least one stitch through it. I've never had any hair come out and I've played with them quite a bit, especially the one with the colorful wool yarn. It's so fun to play with. Okay, so I'm gonna just keep sewing along this seam, whoops. Because you're using a back stitch, it takes quite a bit of thread. So you'll find you have to re-thread your needle more often than you would probably want to. <laughs> And then every now and then I just make sure, I check and make sure that I'm still on the pencil line and that things aren't shifting. Okay, I'm running out of thread, so I'm gonna go ahead and knot it off. I'm going to bury the tail back here, trim and thread a new needle. Okay, so my little knot does have a tiny tail on it, so to make sure it doesn't show from the front when I flip the hair over, I like to make sure I come in from the back. So it just gets buried in the yarn. And then I keep on going all the way around till I'm back to where I started. If you run out of weft, don't worry, I'm gonna show you what to do. I'm using her as a pin cushion. I think my weft might make it all the way around. That's cool. Oh, she looks cute already. Thank you guys. Thank you. Nope, it's gonna be too short, barely. Okay, as you can see, my weft does not quite reach. If yours did reach, that's great. You're gonna just snip it off at the sewn seam. If yours is like mine and did not, you are just going to stitch the end of it and then grab the next weft, butt it up against where you left off and keep sewing. Make sure you maybe double stitch that first few strands so that there's no gap. 
Okay, and then let's see, once I know I'm close, because I don't want to keep sewing farther than I need to, I go ahead and snip. I'm just snipping the sewing machine stitches. You might lose a couple strands of yarn. See, that's okay. And that's ready for the next line. And then I'll fit this piece onto the rest of this line. Make sure I get the last few strands nice and secure. And then I'm gonna knot it once and twice. Bury my tail somewhere inside her head. Snip. Okay, so you can kind of see how this is gonna work because the hair will be flipped like this. Look how cute, oh my gosh. It really needs combed out, but okay, she's starting to get there. So if you were doing a ballerina bun, this is all you would need to do. You could make your weft thicker if you wanna make sure there's no gaps. Or if you were wanted her to have a forever ponytail, this would also be enough. Of course, you can put more wefts in, but this is how I made the ballerina. And her hair, I have a whole video on this. This is the one that is very popular, the yarn doll hair tutorial. So I put a piece of yarn here and then I just wrapped it, wrapped it again this way. Oh, that's cute on the mermaid. Kind of just want to do that, but too late. Okay. So next I'm going to take this weft that I just left off and I'm just going to simply sew the wefts onto all my lines and then one here at the top. It takes a little bit of time, but not as much time as you would think. Put on an episode of Matlock or something. <laughs> Matlock, who watches that still besides me? <laughs> and just keep stitching. Okay, weft number two is attached. See that in the back of her head? It's gonna get fuller and fuller. Oh my gosh, what did I just do with my needle? I just had it. it, didn't even move. Alrighty, I'm on my last weft and I'm just going to sew it onto the seam the best that I can. So I kind of wish this one was long enough because I like the light color in there, but it's not. So I'll just use this one. Just gonna keep on going. I think you might assume that this takes a really long time, but actually it's been less than 30 minutes. So this really is a faster process than you might be imagining. Another reason I like to make extra wefts is because like I had a whole line to start and I didn't want to use the short piece that I had just cut off because I knew it wouldn't go all the way across. I would rather just use a long one. So it kind of gives you some options. And also if you're using variegated yarn, then you can sort of pick which color you want where. So if you want some of the pink in the front or whatever, you can decide. Oh, whoops. That's not cute. Eh, I think I'm gonna have to cut that strand off. Bummer. I have my thimble right here and I forgot to even put it on. Also, when I lost my needle, it was in the pincushion where I put it. <laughs> okay, let me make sure that it's going where I want it to go. Let me put a pin here at the end of it. Go ahead and snip it off carefully, making sure I'm not cutting the other wefts. Okay, perfect. Let me knot it. Twice, bury the tail, and she's done. Well, almost. Okay, she has a full head of hair. She looks so cute. This wool yarn is so lightweight, fun to rake out. Okay, so she's almost done, but what I like to do next is flip her upside down and sort of smooth everything out by finger combing it because not everything was the same length to start with. Some of it was curled in various ways. Some of the strands might have become loose. And then we give her a haircut. So this I kind of take my time with. I sort of arrange the hair how I want it to go. When I make the mermaids, I just sort of give her like a side swept do like this. I like to let it rain pretty free sort of direct it over to one side. Now you've probably seen rag dolls with like a cute side swept bang. You can still do that. 
if you take a small piece of a weft, let's see, here's a small one, you can hand stitch this here, and then you can tack the ends of this into the sides of the hair. So she would then have a side swept bang like that. You can also, if you don't like a gap somewhere, like say you want to arrange the hair a certain way and there's a gap in there, you can see a bald spot. You can just sew individual strands of yarn if you want to. If you wanna put a streak of another color in there, you can hand stitch those in. The options are pretty limitless. Of course, you can style it into a ponytail by wrapping it with another piece of yarn. So I have it pretty straightened out. I like to simply hold her up and cut. Let me show you from a different angle. Okay, so I hold her up like this and I start trimming. Start in the back. I start by cutting off any really obvious long spots to sort of try to start evening it all out. I hold her at various angles because you're not going to get like a straight across look from the back. It's going to be layered to some degree. See how that looks layered? Hers does too, see? If I were to cut it straight across so that the longest match the shortest back here, then in the front it would be really short and we don't really want that. I mean, you could do that, it would be cute too. But this is why I just sort of hold her upright, making sure I do not cut her arms or her tail fin. <laughs> and I just start trimming. And then sometimes I turn her around, look at her from the front, see if anything looks off or needs more trimming, etc. And then I'll hold her at another angle and even things up. She's actually looking pretty good. Okay, I have some stragglers. Sometimes you'll play with it for a whole day and realize you have something that's long. So take your time with this step. Get all this hair out of the way. Okay, now I like to try to lay her down a little bit. Keep trimming until everything looks sort of more even. You just don't want any extra long stragglers, you know, like see this one here. Okay, but it's not going to be perfectly even and straight from all angles, like I said. Okay, look how pretty. She's so pretty. Ooh, I love this wool yarn. Okay, I might play with her hair a little bit more, but I hope this has been fun and enlightening for you. This is one of those things I feel like people think is really hard and then they see someone do it and they're like, oh my gosh, that is really easy. I just did not know how that was done. So don't forget you can go purchase the Persephone mermaid pattern from my shop. I will have a link to it first thing and in the comments. And if you make one, I would love to see it. You can shoot me an email at pincutso at yahoo.com or tag me on Instagram at pincutso because I love to see what y'all have made. I love it when people share pictures with me. <laughs> so yeah, I think I will just see you soon. <laughs> Bye.